Nintendo Switch that is apparently not docking. As usual, the first thing we want to check is the port. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, we can clearly see there's a problem area in the port. There are several bent pins. Task number one will be to disassemble the switch and remove that port. And then we can do some further testing from there and see if there was any collateral damage. We're going to back this ribbon out. We do not want to flick it out. If you flick this ribbon out, you will have many tears. We have the board successfully out of the housing and we're preparing to remove our port. While I'm setting up my equipment, we throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you head to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, or if you buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. First order of business, add some flux, and then we're going to flood these anchor points with low melt. Now we're going to bring the sauce and drop this port right off the board. We'll concentrate in on the anchor points first. Once they have wetted, we will focus in on where the pins and hidden pins are on the other side of the board. Once they have wetted, the port will just fall. Like so. Nice clean pull. First side we're going to be testing is side A because we're already on that side of the board. And I'm going to be testing in the Pi 3 USB area and these filters just below it. I'm just showing this so that you can have a good orientation of where we are on the board. First thing I want to test is the Pi 3 USB. And how we test that is this big capacitor right here. We want to follow the line that's going from this capacitor to the chip. And that side, we do not want to have a pathway to ground. And it does not. Now we're going to check our little filters. On these little filters, we want continuity going from the chip to the port, but we do not want continuity going side to side. All right, everything seems okay there. Let's check side to side. Now we're flipping over to side B, and these are the areas we're going to test. We're going to test around the M92 T36 chip. In this orientation, we're going to move down the board to the MOSFET area and the test pads, and then we'll move over to the BQ24193 area and test around there. I'll keep it in the same orientation for you. First capacitor we're going to test is this one, which we know is tied to the Pi 3 USB on the back, and the line we don't want to be short of the ground is the one going to the chip, and it is not. Now we'll continue testing. Same rules apply for these other capacitors. Lines going to the chip, generally speaking, we do not want shorted to ground. This capacitor right here has two lines going to the chip. In that case, one side will be ground, this side. Generally speaking, if this capacitor is shorted, it is not a good sign for us, but it appears to be fine. Now moving down the board, we're gonna test our MOSFET area. Everything looks good there. We'll check our little filter. Same rules apply to this filter as the ones on the other side. Very good. And now we're going to check our test pads. None of these test pads that I'm checking should have a pathway to ground. Neither should these. Your coil should not have a pathway to ground, but there should be continuity through the coil. Sometimes you have to get through the residue to get there. Don't be trolled by the residue. Now we're going to check our BQ24193. Same rules apply on the BQ24193, except that it has multiple capacitors with multiple lines going to the chip. I just generally know which ones to check these days. And everything is looking good. That does not mean everything is good. This is just what we can detect in continuity mode. Next step will be to put on a new port and test from there. In order to put on a new port, we must clean off the high temperature and low melt solder. Sexy. Hold it down and wait for everything to dry. Sometimes you can neglect these outer pins when you're concentrating on getting that inner row down. Everything looks excellent. Look at those fillets. Factory fresh. Next step will be to thoroughly clean out the board and then we'll come back for power tests.
I hope this video is being helpful to you in your repair journey. Just a reminder, if this is something beyond what you want to try yourself, I do offer these services. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. We're all cleaned up and ready to do some initial testing here. First test I want to do is with my benchtop PSU using my USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter. And we're just going to test real quick and make sure it's getting recognized on both sides. What we want to see here is just a quick jump in amperage and back down. Yeah, I would like to see something a little better than that. But sometimes it doesn't play nicely with this step. And it's not playing nicely with this step. That's okay. We don't draw definitive conclusions from that test. Next test we'd like to perform with our modified iPhone power squid, which we have retrofitted with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite battery connectors. In order to do this, we're going to activate real quickly with the OEM, just a quick plug in and unplug. What we want to see here is just a steady climb in amperage with no hanging. And it looks like it's booting up to me. Most important test in this particular job is our docking. So let's test that real quick. And we are docking. So we have solved our problem. It turns out that the problem was just the port. Not terrible news. We'll put it back in the housing and we'll perform the rest of the test and make sure everything else is copacetic and go from there. We're back up and running on its own battery. And as you can see, we're drawing 15 volts and we're booted up. Let's do some basic testing here. Make sure we're getting our networks and we are. These protectors make getting these Joy-Cons off of so much joy. And we're getting Bluetooth. Just make sure it's reading their game and it's recognizing their game and the fan is spinning. Excellent. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one right here and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.